Hi everyone, this is Kelly from the Wakanda Area Library here to show you what we're doing with this month's Art to Go kit. This month you guys are making shrinky dinks. So in your kit, you're going to find a sheet of shrinky dink plastic, some cardstock, and a piece of parchment paper to line your baking sheet with. From home, you'll need a baking sheet. You will need some kind of markers, scissors, a whole punch would be really helpful, and a little help from a grown up. Um, almost any kind of marker will work, but just make sure it's not washable. You can see right on Crayola, they're really clearly marked. It says if it's a washable marker on there, um, it'll smear and the colors won't be as bright. Um, so shrinky dinks are pretty fun. They've been around for a really long time um, and they allow you to be really creative and do anything you like with them. So I'm just going to give you a couple ideas and tell you the baking method. And then I want you guys to take it and run with it and do whatever you think is fun for you. Um, so. For the shrinky dinks, you can just draw something on it directly on the plastic. You're going to draw and color it in. Um, when you do color on the plastic, um, sometimes you'll get a little bit of the lines. You want to make sure they kind of all go in the same direction because they start to show up once it's cooked. Um, keep in mind that it's going to shrink down to three times smaller than it is right now. So this big sheet's going to end up only being about this big once it's done. So in order so that I could make more projects, I cut mine in half and I did two things. I printed out something from the internet, kind of thought it looked like stained glass, and I laid my shrink eating plastic right over the top of it. Since I'm using a piece that's smaller than my picture, I centered it right in the middle. I wanted to make sure I had that center circle right in the middle. And then something that's a little helpful, a little pro tip here, while I was tracing, I taped it. I didn't want it to slide around on me, so I taped it down. And then I traced it. And the cool thing is, is that when it's this big, it's a lot easier to trace something. So you're just gonna use your marker and go right on the line, okay? So that one is how I did that. And then the other one I had is I thought it'd be really fun to take a page from a coloring book and trace. But this time, again, since I'm only working with my half size sheet, I centered it right on Yoshi's head. So I could just kind of get a picture of that. Again, tape it down. All right, and I trace. It's so much easier tracing it when it's big like this. So I did the black outline first. Color those eyes in. I mean, it would be fun maybe to do some snowflakes, your name. You can do anything you can think of. Um, Valentine's Day is coming up, maybe just do some hearts. Well, just keep in mind how much smaller it's going to get. So if you did, like, you want to do your name or if you take your sheets and try to do as many projects as you can in there and start getting really small, they're really going to shrink down. I'm going to cut this out so you can see how big it actually ended up. Now, I am only just going to trace the outside. I'm not going to color the whole thing in just so we have time so you can see what the end product looks like. I think I've got his whole head done, but this is how you check. You can hold it up and look. Yeah, I've got his head all traced. All right. Then I'm going to take my scissors and cut a circle around him. It does not need to be a perfect circle. If you want it to be a perfect circle, set something on like a plate or something round on there so you can cut around him so it turns into a perfect circle. Now I want to be able to hang this up, so it does need a hole punched into it. So take your hole punch and do that now. Keep in mind that the hole is also going to shrink when it's baking, okay? So before you bake it, you make sure you do all your coloring in. And this is what I meant about going all in one direction. If you go like this and then start going like this, those lines will show up once it's cooked and it'll look a little bit different, okay? And it goes directly onto your baking sheet. Make sure that you have it lined. Set it right on your baking sheet. And see how this is kind of rolling up? You're gonna make sure that this stays on flat, otherwise your shrinking ink will roll up too. Then it goes into an oven at 325 degrees for two to five minutes. What's gonna happen when it's in the oven is it's gonna curl all up into like a little ball and then flatten out again. You'll just have to, you and your grown up will have to keep checking on it. Once it comes flat again, after it's all curled up, once it goes completely flat, it's time to take it out of the oven and allow it to cool. So I'm gonna show you. So remember that one I've used for my half size sheet of shrinky dinks. 
it shrunk all the way down to that small. So, and also, hear how hard it is? Once it's totally cool, it's pretty hard. So it's pretty neat. So, and then that Yoshi starts out this big, shrank all the way down to this small. And as you can see how dark he, the green looks on him, I just used this green marker, but the colors get more concentrated and vibrant when they shrink down. So something else fun to do, I put that cardstock in there because I thought it would be really neat to make this into like a little bit of stained glass. I cut out a little frame for it. So you could do a little frame on it. So and if you put it up in a window and let the light shine through it, the colors will definitely be brighter. You can see the colors are a little brighter. Same with the Yoshi. It's fun if you hang them up, you'll be able to see the light shining through. But I'll make sure I include the temperature in the cook times and make sure you have an adult to help you and have fun, guys. Send me some pictures if you can and keep an eye out for next month's art to go. Bye now.